My name is Kalle Slaap and I'm a watchmaker from the Netherlands. And we're going to do some live watchmaking. I'm going to uh, disassemble this uh, 1940s Cartier with London on the dial. It's supposed to be um, uh, serviced, um, well, only a few years ago. But we're not too sure about that, so um, might be interesting just to look at the movement. It is a 1940s Cartier, so I suspect the movement is just lovely. There is the cold screw. And the first thing we saw, because I saw, uh, told you this watch is from an, uh, a student, a talented student. <laughs> and uh, well, the crystal is just resting on the, the dial, and that is very unusual. And we saw here a bit of a crack. And then we saw um, uh, why this was. So two screws were missing, so all four screws uh, are out now. Let's see if we can get some focus. There and there. And now we can remove without removing the, the crown, the outer case. I just pushed it down and there we are. Not try to force your screwdriver in between and just wiggle wiggle because the gold is so soft you get some impressions you really don't want that. Um, this is going to be interesting because I told you that we saw where the why the crystal was broken. Can you see that? This particular uh, movement the dial is screwed on the movement itself and because I think there's a, a, a rubber seal missing in between the dial and the uh, crystal because simply the curvature of the screw made the crystal crack see that there is the rest of the case Beautiful 18 karat gold. And I know that because there's simply 18 over there. <laughs> I'm going to remove the hands with this special thingy. The levers so we're not touching the hands and not touching the dial. No stress. There we are. No marks whatsoever. And now I think I'm going to remove those screws and that is a bit tricky because if you um, with a screwdriver just get out of the slot you scratch the dial. That's strange. This one wasn't securing the dial simply the wrong screw just too small do you see that i didn't even remove it so the other one was retaining the dial and this one wasn't what else do we see oh oh already worth it look at that the setting lever spring is such a beauty. Just look at the anglage, the, the angling on the sides. This is a masterpiece. Look at that. Straight graining on top, anglage on the sides, and then the yoke spring. This is sheer beauty and even here where the screw head is uh, because of the beauty I didn't see the 
all the stuff in there. <laughs> Remember, this is underneath the dial. There is no way that all this crap can get inside a watch just by uh, wearing it or stuff like that. <laughs> because of the beauty I didn't see it was recently surfaced. Yeah. And what I particularly like and uh, I was looking for the technical beauty <laughs> and didn't see all the, the stuff in there is this recess where the screw head is. It is just the, the inside angling of that is beautiful. Here you can see the screw head is lower than the part. So there's a recess and the sides are just beautifully polished, angled. Beautiful, but not recently serviced. Well, you can see here from this side no shock system. I'm going to remove the cannon pinion. So, very simply removed the cannon pinion just to show you why this is a watchmaker's uh, movement. Do you see those shiny bits there and there and there and there? Those are the underside of the screw. So the screw head is here. This is the tip of the screw and that is beautifully polished. The tip of the screw not the screw head. So all these beautiful shiny bits is the end of the screw which is highly polished. Then you see that one. Lanternage yeah, is simply the, the tip of this screw. Pew full stuff. And here the elegance. Here around the center wheel. There. Beautiful. But again uh, you don't need to be a watchmaker to see that it's not surfaced. And again, just about 80 years old. And even the teeth of the gears. Oh, I think we are going to in, be in for a treat in a moment. Because this is going to be something else. The pellet fork. Do you see the curvature on top of the jewels? Well, like you, uh, you all know, I'm a pellet fork fetishist. If a constructor of a movement took so much time to make the pellet fork beautiful, which is tiny, which is incredibly difficult, and nobody is going to see it, but when you see it, it is jaw-droppingly beautiful. Because remember, you can see the curvature in the pellet here, in the jewel. What you see, well, there. So, there you can see the ruby, and that is domed. Um, Ruby, uh, the hardest material is diamond, hardness 10, ruby hardness 9. So it is incredibly hard material to work on. You need diamond 
to, uh, to work on Ruby. And then to make sure that that curvature is there. What we're talking about is underneath this part. So underneath there is the pellet fork. And then this is a matchstick. So it is insane how much hours they burned on polishing and making that pellet fork beautiful. Uh, during uh, assembly I'll be showing the pellet fork in way more detail just for my, just for my enjoyment but uh, this is going to be very different. Uh, something else. First I'm going to make sure the balance wheel is secure. No shock system so even if you bend it just like this uh, the, the pivots will break. So I'm going to remove that one first and then just see this line here. Just the elegance, there is no need for these lines to be so elegant. And that's why I love 1940s uh, and early 50s uh, movements. No computers involved, just elegant lines and uh, they were made in such a complete different fashion. So this could have been just one line from there to there, no problem. But now there's just this playful lines and then the angling uh, is just all done by hand. 1940s so uh, of course there was electricity but still lovely stuff